Three tips for dealing with insurance companies after a motor vehicle accident. The first tip is about your initial contact with the claims adjuster. Now, more likely than not, the claims adjuster for the other side is going to reach out to you after an accident and want to talk to you, talk to you over the phone. Now, the claims adjusters have really two jobs. Their job number one is determine whose fault it is, determine liability. And then job number two is if there is liability and they need to pay, it's to de determine how much they need to pay. So an adjuster for the other side may call you. Maybe they'll want a recorded statement, maybe not. But just know that they're gathering information to defend their own client and not to help you. So you want to be very careful and choose your words wisely. Um, if you're going to speak with them, you know, give them just the facts. Uh, don't admit liability if you think you might be liable for it. Um, if you do have uh, medical injuries, you can tell them about that. But don't overinflate what your injuries are. Just give them the facts. And by the same token, don't just suck it up buttercup and tell them you're fine even when you're not fine. The second tip for dealing with insurance companies after a motor vehicle accident is to know that the power of documentation is strong. Now, believe it or not, people lie all the time, but the insurance companies generally look at documents as more of a truthful instrument. So you want to have all the documents you need to support your case. Um, you want to document things also that occur like phone calls with insurance adjusters, who you talk to, when you talk to them, what the conversation is about. You'll find that a lot of your contact will be by phone because there's not a record of it, um, but some will be by email as well. So you obviously want to save every single email you get, every sing single document you get from them. Um, medical records are very important because the value of a case is generally determined by your medical specials, your medical billing. So when you are getting treated, be sure to have your medical records that show what treatment you got from each provider. And you also want to have the medical records that show the billing from each provider because the amount that the insurance company is going to pay, if they determine they're going to pay, is going to be based at least in part on the medical billing. So keep those documents. Other records that are important is if you lost work because of your injuries, you want to have documentation to prove that. You can tell them, hey, I lost five days of work, give me $1,000, and they'll say, well, that's nice, show me the documents. So you wanna have something from your employer showing that you are off you know, a certain amount of days. Uh, it's really helpful too if you get something from your doctor that says that this person should be off work from this day to that day. Um, that'll show that the time off of work was medically necessary. And then you're going to need something from your work that shows what your wages are, if you have an hourly rate, um, if you are salaried, something that shows the insurance adjuster, hey, this person was off this many days or lost this many hours, and this is how much they get paid per hour. So they can actually make a calculation of what your lost wages are as a result of the injuries you suffered. Now, you can't just get in a car accident and then go to Tahiti for two months and say, hey, you know what, you gotta pay me for two months because I wasn't able to work. You're gonna need something linking your time off of work to the motor vehicle accident. Finally, if you've got things like photos, videos of your injuries, um, you know, broken skin, a cast on an arm, um, things like the intersection, the smashed cars, debris, all of that is really helpful to make your case. And also, uh, if you get a chance to get a copy of the police report, if there was one made, you definitely want that too, because you want to provide that to the insurance company, because often the police report's going to have all the necessary information, and the police are going to make a determine of who, at least they believe, was at fault. So documentation is very important. Number three is effective negotiation strategies. Now, the claims adjuster's job, as I mentioned in the beginning, is first to determine who's at fault, and then second, determine how much money needs to get paid if the person they insure happens to be at fault. Now, you would expect the insurance company to call you up and say, you know, hey, Tom, I did my analysis. Your claim is worth $10,000. So sign here. I'll give you $10,000. Um, but it's not really like that. Um, if you go to Albertsons and you go buy a turnip and turnips are $2.99 a pound, you're going to put it on the scale. The scale is going to tell you it's one pound, it's $2.99 for the turnip, so you're going to pay that $2.99. With negotiations and personal injury lawsuits or claims, it's a lot different. It's a little bit more like Pawn Stars. 
you are the customer at Pawn Stars. You're bringing in your claim, and Rick Harrelson's looking at you and go, "Oh, okay. What do you want for your claim?" And you say, "I want a hundred thousand dollars." He's going to say, "Well, you know what? I'll give you a thousand dollars for it." And you don't take the thousand dollars like it was a turnip at Albertsons. You've got to negotiate back and forth. And so what happens is the insurance company is going to give you a number. It's going to not be their highest and best number to start with. And then you give them the documentation you have saying your number is too low and this is why the police report says that your insured person is at fault um, as a result of the accident i had these injuries the injuries are documented in my medical records my treatment for these injuries cost this many thousands of dollars documented in the in uh, the medical records as well i also lost this much time of work here's a letter from the employer saying i lost this much time Here's how much I make. So you give them all of the documentation they need to justify their file to give you an increased amount of money to resolve the case. Now, if you don't have a lawyer and you find that what the insurance company is saying seems way, way too low for what your injuries are, it may make sense for you to reach out to an experienced personal injury lawyer just to make sure that you're on the right track or maybe you do need a lawyer to help them open their wallets a little bit more and see what the exposure really is. If you've got any questions here in Las Vegas, please feel free to drop me a call.